Uh, my name is Frank Godin, and I'm a member of the Yellow Springs Planning Commission. I'll be chairing our uh, return to our Zoom Planning Commission meetings format. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, have the clerk call the roll, please. Yes, Godin. Here. Stiles. Here. Green. Here. Amend. Here. Curlis. Here. Also present is Public Works Director Johnny Burns, Solicitor Brianne Parcels, and Planning and Zoning Administrator Denise Swinger. Village Manager Josue Salmaron is also present. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to briefly uh, go over tonight's agenda, which uh, hopefully a lot of you have copies of. Uh, the first thing we'll do is a review of the minutes from the previous meeting in July. Uh, then I'll quickly review the communications we've received uh, this week or, or uh, for items on the uh, on the agenda for this meeting. Then we'll have a council report. Laura, uh, will you be doing a council very, report? Yeah, very short. Okay. And maybe Josue, will you have anything to add to that as well? Not sure if he's there or not, but I guess we'll find out when we get there. Uh, after that, there's a period called uh, citizen comments, and that's a period where uh, people will have an opportunity to comment on items that are not on tonight's agenda. There'll be separate public comment times for the items that we'll be considering uh, for the conditional use hearings that we'll be having. We'll have a time for public comments for each of those. Uh, after citizen comments, then we'll have uh, three public hearings. We have three conditional use hearings tonight. Uh, the first one having to do with 225 Quarry Street. Uh, the second for uh, an accessory dwelling unit at 118 Marshall. And the third is for a uh, bed and breakfast at 310 Dayton Street. After that, uh, the Planning Commission will return to uh, discuss old business, new business, agenda planning, and then adjournment. So uh, I guess we're ready to head into the agenda then. So let's begin by reviewing the minutes uh, this will be uh, very exciting for the Planning Commission members, but not possibly not so much for the people watching. Uh, we're just going to go through the minutes of the Tuesday, July 15th, 2021 meeting. I'll go through them uh, one page at a time, and if any members of the Planning Commission have any additions or corrections or changes that need to be made, uh, go ahead and, and chime in. So, so does anybody uh, have anything on page one? I got the date wrong, but I'll change it. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yep, it was wrong. Okay. Anything on page two? Anything on page three? Anything on page four? Anything on page five? Page six. Must have been a long meeting. <laughs> page seven. Or page eight. Okay, not hearing anything. I'll uh, move that the uh, minutes for the Tuesday, July 13th, is that right? Yes, correct. Uh, 2021 uh, me meeting uh, that the minutes be approved. I second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, unless there's any discussion, will the clerk call the roll, please? Yes, Stiles. Yes. Amend. Yes. Green. Yes. Curlis. Yes. Doden. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we received, I think, uh, eight or nine uh, written communications, uh, all having to do with the three conditional use hearings uh, that we have uh, coming up tonight, uh, some in support of the different proposals and some opposed to the different proposals. I believe, I suspect that uh, some of the people who may have written uh, will have, are, are also attending the meeting and will have an opportunity to speak as well. Um, Let's move on to the council report then. Uh, 
Laura. Uh, just real quickly, uh, council approved its own building department and we had a first reading on residential and commercial permit fee schedules. Josue is, might say a little bit more about that. We will be hiring an outside contractor whose uh, specialty is pr providing uh, residential and commercial permit uh, plan reviews and permitting. Um, so it's not something we'll be doing in-house, although I'm sure Denise will be coordinating. Uh, we had citizen concern. Uh, Mitzi Miller is definitely concerned about the sidewalks. Please, everyone, if you have a sidewalk next to your property, if you can make sure that the grass is edged and it, it's, is, um, and that vegetation is pulled back or, or trimmed back from the sidewalk so that people can pass. Um, and the village staff is uh, looking into uh, better maintenance on that. Uh, municipal broadband utility, we had a first reading on starting a municipal broadband utility. That kind of utility is dependent on citizens uh, uh, subscribing to the utility, so I encourage you to do so. And finally, I just want to touch on uh, Lori Askeland at the last council meeting presented a proposal for a type of roadway treatment for Spillane Road. It would be a way to market to kind of provide a higher level of safety and clarity for people using Spillane, uh, pedestrians, bikers, and uh, vehicles because it is a shared roadway in that way, that, like Livermore and some other streets that we have our so um, I encourage you to look at that proposal. And that's it. Maybe um, Host Wakens wants to say more about the building department. Thank you. Hi, Frank. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, Laura did a wonderful job of covering uh, most of our, our, our work here. Uh, just, we wanted to take some time to provide Planning Commission an update on the building department, how, how, where we are in the process, um, what are the next steps and answer any questions that that uh, planning commission members and uh, any any uh, participants of this meeting may have on the on the matter. Um, Laura mentioned that the building apartment has been fully approved. Our building schedule has also been approved by council and the state has certified the village of Yellow Springs uh, building department. so, We've uh, checked off all the all the boxes that we needed to do. We are actively receiving uh, permits. I think uh, Denise already received her first permit. Uh, we've got a pl process in place already. So hey, we're 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 getting it done. We're getting it done. As you know, uh, our my team is is um, committed to looking at at improving the economic. Uh, activity in the village. So we see the building department and municipal broadband as economic development imperatives. Uh, we have a, a very fragile local economy and these things together help attract business, encourage local business expansion. And you know, we're, we're looking out for our residents and our business owners to uh, help them in their uh, growth strategy and their efforts to thrive. Because if they do well, we as a community will do well. We'll be building a more resilient uh, local economy. And so do you have any questions uh, for the building department? Anybody, members of the Planning Commission, have any questions? I see that Dino raised a hand. Maybe you're getting to him next. Okay. Do you know? He's muted. Yeah, one question I just had, what's the jurisdiction for the the building department? Is it just the, the Yellow Springs or is it outside Yellow Springs, the township or other other entities around around the Miami Valley? Uh, currently, currently, it's only the Yellow Springs proper. Uh, so wherever our, our corporate boundaries uh, lie, um i that's that's what we have approved now i think that there's some movement happening in the building permitting space there are a lot of municipalities that are, are unhappy with the county process uh, we're currently the second municipality to move away from the town from the county's process uh in the last 24 months uh cedarville's commercial uh, they decided to set up their own building department uh, we obviously we set up ours and I hear rumblings about other 
uh, municipalities that are unhappy. So I think there's going to be a shift happening in the space. Folks will either start their own or there may be an opportunity for um, municipalities to take on other municipalities. I mentioned in my reports to council what West Jefferson, a little old West Jefferson was doing around the building permitting space. This is a village of similar size to us and their building department is serving uh, close to 60,000 residents uh, in, in, through their building department. So they're serving the entire county on residential and other municipalities in both residential and commercial. So, for, but for the time being, um, while we are ambitious to see our community thrive, we're focused on it just being Yellow Springs. And uh, Josue, what's the timeline for everything being up and operating? It's up and up now. Oh, One okay. of the things that, yeah, it's up. So, uh, so uh, Frank, or if any of you have a, a, a permit that you've been holding out because you want to, you were waiting for that lumber price to come down or you were waiting on the process to get easier, uh, we're, we're open for business. So you can submit that tomorrow. Okay, great. Okay. Any other questions from Planning Commission for Josue or Laura? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now uh, have the period for uh, citizen comments, uh, and this will be uh, regarding items that are not currently on tonight's agenda. And we'll ask you to electronically uh, raise your hand uh, somewhere on the screen and the borders. There'll be an option for you to do that. Uh, and we're asking everybody to uh, limit their comments to three minutes. So I'll give everybody a few seconds here to see if there's any citizen comments out there about any items that are not on tonight's agenda. I don't see anybody waving. You see any electronic hand waving? Okay. I'll give everybody a couple more seconds just in case. All right, uh, we'll uh, finish with the citizen comments and we will proceed to the first of the three uh, conditional use hearings that we have tonight. Uh, Max Chrome of Chrome Architecture on behalf of Iron Table Holdings has submitted a conditional use application with a site plan review for a restaurant serving alcohol, entertainment space, and outdoor patio seating at 225 Quarry Street. Uh, if we could start uh, by uh, turning to Denise Swinger for the staff uh, for the staff report. Okay, um, Max is on Zoom tonight. Um, uh, and all, of, all of the uses that you mentioned are allowed in the B1 district. Um, rather than permitted, they're conditional, which is the reason why we have this public hearing tonight. Um, staff uh, normally follows the interpretation of the zoning code when sending out public notifications to property owners um, which is typically to owners of property that's contiguous to or directly across the street from the property. But because of this proposed use um, and its likely huge economic impact to the benefit of the village, um, staff decided to broaden the buffer zone. And as you can see on this map, um, it's not just properties that are contiguous, but it's properties uh, or properties that are directly across the street, but we've pretty much uh, covered uh, the downtown area. Now these do go to the property owners, they don't go to the individual um, tenants uh, of, of these buildings, but all of those people within that uh, buffer zone did receive a public hearing notification. The 225 Quarry Street parcel, which was the former fire station, it sits on a little over a third of an acre and is almost entirely covered um, with impervious surface areas. The building itself, <clears throat> concrete and asphalt, except for um, a small area at the rear of the building. And this area at the rear of the building um, next to the bike path is one of the areas that's gonna be um, one of the two outdoor patios. Um, and to mitigate the stormwater runoff based on our new mitigation plan, the applicant <clears throat> has proposed replacing the hard surface area at the front of the building with uh, pervious pavers. So that will <clears throat> that is their mitigation plan for this property. Um, the outdoor patio um, on the east side uh, next to the Little Miami Scenic Trail um, will require <clears throat> a zero lot line variance, much like what we did uh, 
with the uh, open market eatery uh, at 108 Cliff Street. Um, there's an entrance ramp on the northeast side of the building that's going to connect to the existing paved area um, for where we have a bicycle parking pad um, next to the bike path and meeting the ADA requirements for accessibility. Um, the main concern <clears throat> for this use, um, obviously, is parking. And Chrome Architecture will provide details um, for how they intend to handle parking for shows and have also provided for Planning Commission a traffic analysis done by a qualified traffic engineering firm, LJB. And Dan Hoying of LJB is also present tonight on Zoom if the commission has any questions for him. Uh, noise impacts should be minimal. The building is concrete blocks and there will be additional insulation materials used. Uh, noise from patrons sitting in the two outdoor patio areas, um, as I described uh, in my report, will be from human conversations. The outdoor patio areas, uh, which will serve as an extension of the restaurant, will be open between the hours of 11 a.m. and 10 p.m. seven days a week. The other concerns um, include lighting and signage. Um, a variance to the type and number of signs is going to be required. However, it should be noted that the number of signs is really not more than what you may find along Xenia Avenue, where the buildings, which are close together and in some cases attached, have the individual business signs displayed. Um, as I mentioned in my report, roof signs are prohibited and shall not extend above the roof's height. Mr. Chrome will address this in his presentation with the location of the logo sign. Uh, the logo sign is internally illuminate, illuminated, which is allowed uh, in the B1 district. Um, the, light, the lighting um, that was shown in the renderings is primarily direct cutoff lighting. Um, the, two li the tube lighting that is on the building is a low-level LED and will not shine beyond the borders of the property. Um, unless you have any questions for me, I'd like to turn this presentation over to Max, or who, he's going to go into much greater detail. Okay. Oh, uh, Susan, did you have a question? Yes, Denise, I had a question uh, before Max gets started, because this was in one of the letters, that it looks like work has started on the building. Is that permitted to have it done before this hearing? Uh, work hasn't started on the building, just a fence around it. Has okay. Been okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Max. Oh, you're muted. Oh, this way. Can you give Max hosting privileges? I'm done. Thank you. Well, you should be able to. Oh, oh, hey, you go. Hi, gang. Hi, everybody. Uh, Max Chrome. Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. I'm really excited about this presentation tonight. Um, before I get started, I want to shout out uh, some of my folks in California. I see Kara is on the call and Scott is on the call. Uh, they've been holding it down uh, for the California practice while I'm out here focusing on these amazing projects in Yellow Springs. Um, also, I want to thank uh, Dan Hoying from uh, uh, from uh, who to, who's on the line to answer any questions you might have about the parking and traffic study that was submitted. And then lastly, uh, Josue and Denise, congratulations on getting the building department up and running. I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to make a big difference in how these projects flow uh, through the village. So having said all that, I'd like to share my screen and uh, take you through my presentation. Give me just a moment, folks. Hmm. No, here we go. Sorry, guys. I'm just figuring my computer out here. I got it. 
Okay. Um, okay. Let's try this again. Sorry, gang. Okay, here we go. Okay, can everybody see my uh, my uh, uh, screen? It's a, a satellite image of the village. Yes. Okay, great. So what you see on your screen here is the location of the firehouse and nearby parking. I want to start out by talking about parking. Um, I, you know, I, I'm doing this presentation from Yellow Springs because I really wanted to have a firsthand experience of what people's concerns were. Uh, that's why I built the mock-up over the weekend um, so that I could listen to what people had to say. And one of the main concerns that people had was parking. How are we going to manage the parking? So that's the first thing I'd like to address. And you can see each one of these uh, pins indicates a, a, a certain parking uh, in Yellow Springs. And we're going to talk about the traffic study in a moment. Uh, but, but first, I want to talk about the condition of the existing parking at each of these locations. So let's start with the parking lot right at the firehouse. I'm going to show you a series of photographs that were taken at uh, 7 p.m., which is when I anticipate people would be arriving to park in the village for a show. So uh, firehouse, you see this, this is taken at 7 p.m. It's about a third full. Uh, Keith Sally parking is the next one, uh, approximately about a third full. The village parking lot at the corner of Railroad and Dayton, same thing. Um, John Bryan Center, I would say a little less than a third full. Uh, Millworks, uh, uh, again, uh, maybe a quarter full at the most. Um, okay, sorry, this has nothing to do with my presentation. This is this is the location of the Children's Community Center. And the reason I am pointing that out is because it's right by this project. And that's where I met my wife. Uh, uh, and uh, we got married exactly 24 years ago today. So happy anniversary, sweetie. Back to the presentation. Uh, the Old Union Schoolhouse. Uh, is, is the last place uh, that, that I'll show you a photograph of, of the parking. Uh, but before I go there, I want to point out the location of the bike path. And you can see how the bike path connects up um, most of this parking downtown. And um, I'll be talking with you in a little bit about a project, a separate project that I'm working on uh, on, a, on a pro bono basis with the village to improve the bike path along this area so that there's a well-lit and safe passage between Millworks and the new club that we're proposing that picks people up uh, uh, you know, along all this parking. And I'm hoping that people will use the bike path in order to get to the club. Now, if, if that's not a practical solution, uh, we will run a shuttle service between the club and 314 Dayton Street, which has adequate parking. And you, if you want to jump into all the details of that, you can look at the submittal uh, that was submitted along with the traffic report. Um, to put the parking demand in, in really in a perspective that I think everyone on this Zoom can understand, the Little Art Theater actually has more seats than what we're proposing at this club. And so I, you know, I don't know if the Little Art, the Little Art Theater would sell out every night like I anticipate that this club will, uh, but it gives you a sense of that we, we're, we're serving the, about the same number of people. Okay, so now let me get into the plan itself. Uh, this is the, a site plan of the, of the project. Um, the shuttle would drop people off on uh, the on the property, so you can you can see the property actually contains um, the entire entry on that side it, it is all contained within this same property. So it gives us a really nice place to drop passengers off from uh, uh, from the shuttle service. Um, the circulation pattern from the parking lot would be the you see the first turn there gets the the uh, people into the eatery, and then the second turn would get people into the club. They're really going to operate as two completely separate businesses. Uh, there may be kind of joint uh, 
uh, events between the two, but in general, they'll be, they'll be operating as two separate entities. Um, the eatery uh, will be in this, this section of the building where there's the three roll up doors uh, and that's supported by outdoor seating. Um, after we put the kitchen in for the eatery, there's not a whole lot of room for seating. We, we won't, won't have a ton of seating inside the eatery. So it's very important for us to have this outside seating uh, to make it work. Um, the box office will be where you're used to entering the old township offices, that same little area, kind of perfect for a box office. There'll be bathrooms right there next to it. Right past the box office is the foyer where, you know, Dave uh, likes to lock people's phones up when they come. So that's where people get their phones put into their, into their pouch and locked up. And it'll be a merch shop where folks can buy T-shirts and other swag from the shows. Uh, and then there's the performance hall. It is a, a, a very intimate venue. Um, and you'll get, I'll show you a little peek inside a little further in the presentation. Uh, the rest of it is sort of back of house functions, you know, uh, storage and green room, et cetera. There is a mezzanine um, at the upper level, which will be used as a control room where we'll have our computers and monitors and, and all that kind of stuff to, to control the club. Um, so again, I want to highlight the bike path. You can see that what I'm trying to do is activate the bike path as, you know, I, I don't look at this as the back of the building. This is not the back of the building. It's the rear entry. It's the back entry. And the idea is to make it lively back there um, where, you know, it, it would be a safe place to be at night. And um, that's why I, I'm, I'm working with the village uh, to put a proposal together. And we're going to propose to the county and apply for funds to pay for things like garbage cans, lighting, benches, bicycle parking, et cetera, um, to, to make that a safe and pleasant stroll from uh, all the way from Yellow Springs Brewery, uh, all the way down to the club. And uh, it will be a very special, could be a very special part of, uh, of downtown. Um, lastly, I want to point out that we do have neighbors right across the street. If, if you saw the mock-up, you can really see how close we are to them. Um, and although, you know, we may not agree uh, on, on, uh, on this club, um, I did have the opportunity to, to speak with Betty and Wayne over the weekend, and they were uh, extremely gracious. They invited me into their house and gave me a, a tour of their beautiful place and uh, showed me the art that Betty does, and it's, it's really wonderful. And, um, you know, I, I told them I can't make it as if there's not a comedy club across the street from them, uh, but I can do my very best uh, to minimize the impact on them. And that will include things like, you know, monitoring their driveway, you know, if, if you know, from our side, keeping a, a, a clean site, uh, pushing the sort of as much loading and human activity as we can away from their front door. Um, so th those are the types of steps uh, that we, we're happy to take. And I also let them know that they are free to be in touch with uh, myself and my, uh, my, superintendent, my project manager during construction, they'll have all our numbers um, so that we can uh, make sure that we, we take it as best care of our neighbors as we can. Um, so moving on here, uh, you guys all recognize this picture. This is what the firehouse has looked like for years. Um, and I just want to point out with this picture, you know, it, it, I think it was great as a firehouse, but it's in danger of, of sort of falling into being another uh, underused resource in this town. And, um, you know, if there's one thing that ties together all the different projects we're working on, it's the fact that we're taking these existing buildings that are maybe underused or underutilized and bringing them back to, you know, a higher and better use um, uh, as resources in the community. Um, so I spent some time over the weekend building up a full-scale mock-up and that was because I want everyone to see, really get a true sense of what this thing will feel like. This is what it looked like at night, uh, last night, if any of you came by. And then this is my vision of what I think it could look like. And you'll see, uh, you know, where the eatery entry is on the left there and the trellis with the festival lights. And then in the background there, you see the marquee 
with uh, the entry and the, and the C sign uh, that Denise referred to. Um, now, th there's a question about whether that sign, um, you know, qualifies as a roof sign. And I think, if, you know, kind of the simple answer is it, it looks like a roof sign. But I would argue that the, the Planning Commission has the power to decide what is and what isn't a roof sign. I would argue that that's a wall uh, sign. And, and the reason I argue that is because it's a part of the marquee. The marquee is a part of the building. It's not a sign, it's a marquee. And that is a, 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 is a part of the shape and structure and the design of the marquee. You know, if you, if you wanna talk about the roof, it has a little roof on it. It actually does exist below its roof. So I think there are grounds to, to uh, approve it on the basis of it being a wall sign. Uh, uh, and, and I just want to point out, it is essential to the quality of the project. It's essential for people to see from the intersection at Dayton and Quarry uh, where the club is. That's just, um, that it's absolutely essential to the project. So I want to show you the next image. Uh, this is where the, um, the entry into the eatery eatery would be. So you can see in there uh, where the eatery would be on the left-hand side and the club on the right-hand side. This is what that looked like at night last night. And this is my vision of what uh, we, we can make it look like. Uh, this, uh, moving on, this is towards the entry, uh, you know, get it as you queue up. This is where people will queue up towards the, under the marquee and towards the box office. This is what it looked like last night. And uh, this is the artistic rendering of it uh, with, a, a place to put up posters of shows and, and uh, coming attractions. Um, and one thing that I think is cool about the name of the, of the club firehouse, obviously the, 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 the genesis of that name is pretty obvious, but also kind of the subtitle of live from YS is really talking about where we are. So here's some other images, some renderings. It shows you the overview. You could see, the patio area that Denise was talking about where the permeable pavers are. I envisioned fire pits out there. I thought that went great with the idea of firehouse, firehouse, fire pits. Um, it really brings some liveliness to that area. Um, and you, you'll notice that uh, the lighting is, what I'm trying to do with the lighting is keep it very low. Um, so my lighting scheme is really based on this bollard light design. And so those are the black lights that you see. They're low. They come up to maybe 48 inches. And to light the entire project up with uh, those kind of lights. And it, you know, the level, we're not trying to be seen from outer space. We really just want um, to have enough light for people to safely navigate around. We really want kind of a fun, festive nighttime mood, uh, which to us is not overly lit. Um, there's the backside where you could see uh, the uh, uh, sort of how the back patio works, its relationship to the bike path, going for really kind of a different vibe on the back. You could see the, the logo and the treatment uh, is different on the back from the from the bike path. I think there's an opportunity to do something just a little funkier, a little more um, kind of showing off what the building originally was. And so I'm I'm proposing that we show off the initial or the original concrete block there, and we we'd only do that for about half. The other half of the building is a beautiful spot for a mural um, and uh, something that I think would would really go nicely there. Um, so. This is the view sort of from ground level. And there you can see some of the lighting that I'm talking about fading off into the background, um, creating a, a safe, well-lit path. Um, we will have you know, cameras pointing out this direction. I know one of the concerns that came up from the Glen uh, when I met with, uh, with Nick from the Glen was that you know, there's, there's activities happening back there, people jumping the fence and things going on back there um, that uh, are not desirable for the Glen. There's animals that get to the garbage and, and drag that into the Glen. So I think one of the things we could do uh, to be a good neighbor with the Glen is to, again, working with the, uh, the village and the county to create funds to improve the fence uh, between the bike path and the Glen there. Um, and of course, you know, we'll be monitoring that and we'll have an increased police presence there as well. So, um, okay. This is, I'm, I've, I've kind of gotten to the end of, uh, of the, 
of describing the building. So I'm just going to leave you all with a little bit of a video uh, fly through. Um, and so here we are kind of coming from the front side of the building, uh, rotating around the back. And you could see this lucky family back here is getting their picture taken uh, at what will surely be a landmark restaurant, a landmark club. Um, this, you know, this will be a kind of place that people will be talking about all over the world. Uh, it, it'll be something that people will come to visit all over the world. You know, what I'm, what you're reviewing here is much more than a comedy club. It's a landmark. Um, and you know, what, what we're, what we're, presenting as a landmark. Here's a little peek inside. You know, usually you don't show a planning commission the inside, but I thought I'd share this. You can see how intimate a space it is, very small. And here we are kind of going along Quarry Street along the front, um, people outside enjoying a nice dinner. These guys getting their Instagram photograph taken. You see all these wonderful artists that work with Dave. And speaking of the wonderful artists that work with Dave, um, you know, you, you could see on those posters, Dave, Dave doesn't do all this alone. It's Dave Chappelle. And I put the word, the words and friends up there because of the people that surround Dave, the, the creative energy, uh, that happens in this town. It's not just this, you know, this club isn't just for Dave. It's for this, this amazing group of incredibly talented people. And, um, you know, having said all that, I'd actually, I'd like to ask Dave to say a couple words. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, good evening. I, first of all, Max, that was great. It was very exciting. Thank you. I, uh, I just wanted to say that when I started in New York City, I played a legendary comedy club. Still exists. It's called the Comedy Cellar. This club is only 115 seats. Some of the greatest names that have ever existed in stand-up comedy have played and do play that club. And no matter what building you're in, it, it always depends on what culture you curate uh, to fill the building. Here in Yellow Springs with me this weekend is the hip-hop director of the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. I'm here this weekend with uh, Talib Kweli, who's my partner in my podcast and also one of the most renowned uh, artists in hip-hop in the world. Um, if, if we build this thing, uh, I'm telling you that all the greats will come. Uh, they're very excited about it. And they all, many of whom have been here from last summer and, and previous times, are enamored with Yellow Springs. This is a culture that I think they would be very invested in preserving um, and, and, and even uh, adding to in the best case scenario. I think that... Uh, the culture of this town is something of global import. I think that the way that we treat each other in our community is, is an example for the rest of the country, which is, is being torn asunder culturally. This is a culture war. And I believe that this club would put us in a position to help everyone be inspired to put their best foot forward. You would be amazed. Some of the people who come to Yellow Springs, when Carlos Santana was here, you know, Carlos Santana, the famed uh, alumni of, of Woodstock, his wife is actually from Yellow Springs and she plays with, uh, you know, Lenny Kravitz and a lot of other great musicians that I know. Everybody that I speak to has expressed interest in coming and performing here. So I don't want you to think because the size of the venue uh, that big artists won't come. It's not how many seats there are, it's the size of the event. It's the size of, of what we are, are uh, offering the culture at large. And I feel like this would be a wonderful, wonderful place to do that from. And I know that there's a lot of local talent here who try to climb the ladder that I climbed. And, and sadly, in Ohio, these, these ladders too often stop abruptly. That you, you can't pursue all of your interests to completion from a place like this. But I feel like if we had a venue like this, if you were an aspiring artist, if you were able to see the best entertainment available in the world and in your hometown and were able to even perform on that stage. There's a lot of people uh, who, who may have not otherwise been able to make it out of here. Good. I'm just, I'm not just trying to make a club. I'm trying to make a way. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a, a venue for our talents to be showcased as well as my friends talents so that we can shine and be, you know, all the great things that we hope to be in the world. That's all I wanted to say. And I really appreciate your consideration. And I hope that, uh, I hope that you uh, are, are amenable to this. Thank you. Oh, and with me now 
Talib Kweli, you want to say anything? Sure, sure, sure. Hello, how y'all doing? Um, uh, first, I want to say I appreciate you letting me speak as an outsider uh, to this community. Um, I'm humbled. I'm honored by this opportunity. Um, Green County is is my, my last name is Green, spelled with an E, just like how y'all do it here. So I already feel at home. Um, I come from a, a family of educators. I own a bookstore. So to come to a place with so many bookstores has always made me feel at home. Um, to come to a place that's the home of Virginia Hamilton is very exciting for me because the stories that she painted for me as a child gave me an idea of what a community really could be. And so when I picture in my head the perfect version of a community, I was picturing Yellow Springs, Ohio, and I didn't even know that. Um, since I've been hanging out here, I've learned the history of the Conway Co Colony and of Gaunt, uh, Gaunt Park. And Yellow Springs has always been a place that has championed and supported people going through struggle. It's not just one of the most progressive and welcoming places in the world, in, in Ohio, but it's one of the most progressive, welcoming places I've ever seen in the whole world. Performers like myself have to come to Ohio, um, but the vibe in Yellow Springs is more artist friendly than anywhere in Ohio that I've ever been. Um, in the spirit of the phrase, everything is local, beyond being an icon, Dave has been a leader. And because of his desire to bring resources back to the community that raised him, um, he's inspired me greatly. Um, this event space, hopefully, can be about professional artists doing professional work. It's not about partying or trying to change the vibe of the town. It's only to add to and enhance the vibe of the town. I've spent the last year hanging out here. This town has shown me personally a lot of love, and I look forward to possibly adding more to your wonderful, beautiful community. Thank you for embracing me in your home, and I appreciate you. Peace. Okay, thank you so much, Pauline. Thank you. Um, I, I, w I wanted to mention one other thing just about the local aspect of this town. I'm, uh, I've arranged to have a, a local, not a local uh, general contractor, an Ohio general contractor who I've worked with nationally. Um, but the, the subcontractors, uh, Dave has asked me to use as much local talent as is possible. So the the framing, the sheetrock, the plumbing, et cetera, we're going to look for local talent, Yellow Springs, if possible, Green County, if not, and we'll move out from there. Um, and, you know, all part of kind of the bigger vision, um, you know, that, that uh, Denise mentioned in her staff report, that projects in this particular district um, should, in particular, seek to employ villagers. And um, that's, that's what we're going to do during the construction, and that's what we're going to do uh, during the operation of the club. So with that, I'm going to conclude um, th this portion of our presentation, and we'll stand by uh, for any questions uh, from the Planning Commission uh, or to respond to any concerns uh, from citizens. And uh, I'll return. I don't know how to return hosting privileges. Uh, Josue, maybe you could help me with that. I think you, you just have to sort of unmute yourself. Just or mute my. Yep, yep. Take it from here. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation uh, for uh, everybody who spoke. Uh, do any members of the Planning Commission at this point have any questions for Denise and the staff report or for Max uh, regarding their report? Uh, Susan. Um, my question has to do with the outdoor eating in the front. Then I'm wondering, is there any way, because I'm thinking of Betty and Wayne, and I'm, I'm sure that there are other houses there um, behind, but I'm wondering, is there any way to sort of minimize the sound in perhaps the way that you're designing it? Um, you know, I, I appreciate that they will only be open till 10, um, so hopefully that will help. But I, I just wondered, is there any way to minimize sound? Yeah. Max, would you like to speak to that? Okay. Oh. Oh, Max, you're muted. Can we get Max unmuted, please? There we go. Okay, there oh, we go. There we go. Thank yep. you. Um, um, the, the 
the, the main thing that we can do uh, for Betty and Wayne, I, I think we've done, um, which is to move the outdoor seating absolutely as far away from their front door on the front side as we can. So I've pushed it all the way uh, towards the subway uh, for that very reason. You know, that was even before I did this mock-up, I was, I had considered that. And I thought that, that that would be the appropriate place for the seating, as opposed to where we have the people queuing up, we could have flipped it. Um, but, but so we've done that. It is an open air, um, it, it is an open air environment. Um, so, you know, it really is just about the human voice. Uh, we, we won't be doing amplified music out on that patio area, uh, at least not above, you know, normal speaking decibels that are, are required by the, by the village ordinance. Um, and we'll work with them to, you know, if, if it does become a nuisance, we'll work with them to, to try to police it as best we can. I think that's the best we, we can do. I, I don't know if there's a, um, a design solution that that mitigates the sound, but you know, I'd be happy to inquire with a acoustical engineer and see if maybe there's some kind of treatment on the wall that would benefit. I just, I, I, I'm not sure. Thank you. Any questions or concerns from any other members of Planning Commission at this point? Hmm? Um, Denise, okay, I, can you address the? Um, Options for the. I'm oh, sorry, Frank. Um, no, no Denise, that's all right. Um, could you address the options or considerations we can do for the roof sign or not roof sign, whatever we want to call it? So, the the roof sign, you know, is is you cannot have a sign on top of the roof, and this is not actually going to be located on top of the roof. It's actually on the marquee. Um, it, I, I, it might project a little bit higher. Um, there's other things you could do, creating a wall um, on the roof. I mean, you know, is, is that really necessary? I think this is such a unique uh, project. Does it, do we really want to make them have to go that extra mile? That, that was my question. If that's, you know, if all that would satisfy, it would just be putting a wall up there. I know. I mean, if there's a will, there's a yeah. way, but, you know. Okay. I mean, yeah. okay. okay. So, Denise, can you clarify uh, what exactly needs conditional approval? I mean, being in the central business district, obviously a lot of things are, you know, are permitted. So what 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 is it that they're actually asking for that isn't permitted? Change of use. Well, conditional only means that the people that surround that area um, that might have concerns with impacts. And so you look at things like hours of operation and noise and traffic, and you know those, those issues have been addressed. Um, and there might be some more questions for Dan Hoying, um, but uh, it's just an opportunity for people to at least say, well, if you do, if you are gonna approve this, could we at least have this condition um, put on that. Yeah. Well, and then in addition to that, because the building is changing its use, right? From well, what it was before. I mean, yeah, yeah but, but, but the type of use that it's changing to yeah. um, a restaurant serving alcohol, that's conditional. Um, the outdoor patio seating connected with a, the alcohol establishment requires a, a conditional use. Um, same with like a performance hall. So and you it's mentioned, like, it's, you know, uh, if, they, if they were straight out permitted, we, I just would um, sign off on the zoning and they would be good to go. Um, conditional, they need to come to the planning commission just to give people an opportunity to weigh in. But it's still an allowed use. It's not prohibited. Any other members of planning commission have any questions or concerns at this point? I know I would like to hear from, uh, is it Dan Hoying? I hope I pronounced your name correctly, uh, specifically regarding the uh, traffic impact study that was done. I have a couple of questions about that. Okay. Hi, Dan, can you, can you, hear, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And, and in addition to myself with LJB, I have a, one of our traffic engineers, Tom Flask, is on, is on this call as well. So. Okay. Yeah, if you could, uh, I think what would be helpful for me, perhaps helpful for other people as well, is just give 
uh, sort of a, uh, a clear, simple description of the process for doing the traffic impact study, methodology, how it was done, uh, why you chose the numbers you did, that sort of thing uh, that I think uh, speak to some of the concerns that have been raised regarding the uh, traffic study. Yeah, sure. Great. Um, so we work with Chrome on, on the plan and, and the number of trips that are anticipated were all provided as part of their early work and, and included in the submittal. Um, traffic counts were collected using Maya Vision cameras at the intersection as well as across the street from the um, from the from the project. And then we turned the data over to our traffic engineers to select uh, the hours that we felt would be most appropriate to review. Obviously, with the evening uh, use of this, that's a little untypical for the traffic analysis. And so I guess at this point, really to, to get the clearest answer on the methodology, Tom, you, you've run all the numbers on this. Uh, are you able to, if we're unable to mute Tom Flask, I think he would be the one to be able to best speak to, okay. to how we got to the results. Okay, thanks, Dan. So we looked at uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh, did traffic counts on those evenings um, from 5 to 10 each evening. Uh, and we just did what standard procedure is to pick sort of the busiest hour in that time. Uh, and that turned out to be between 5 and 6 p.m. on Friday. Uh, I know that that's about an hour before the, the operations of the, the club would start um, but to sort of give the best basis and to pick the busiest time that we would put that traffic on top of, we picked that time. Uh, and then we used the methodology from um, this group called ITE, the Institute of if, Transportation. If I, if, if I could interrupt you a second. Oh. So the idea of peaking, uh, selecting the numbers from that peak hour and then putting the uh, the estimated traffic from the club on top of that, that's to give kind of a worst case scenario exactly exactly okay yeah and we had you know assuming that the restaurant and the club were both operating at once okay. um and that everyone was sort of coming in that hour right. okay. uh, and so we used that um the trip generation manual which is the the standard procedure to get numbers which brought us to uh about a, a hundred trips uh, in that hour between the the venue use and the restaurant use. Uh, and so then we looked at the, the intersection, uh, we call it background traffic, um, What how the intersection that uh, Corey and um, Xenia operates without any of the venue traffic and it operates, it's fine, it's at a level of service C. Um, and we added on the, the venue traffic um, for the site uh, and it continued to operate at actually the same level of service with just a small amount of delay. Uh, we then took the, that traffic and decided uh, and looked at the different directions where people could come from and where they might go based on where the, the parking is uh, and split that up. And based on the number of parking spaces, how many would go in each direction um, and adding in all of those turns and the, the shuttle, uh, there was still plenty of capacity at the intersection. Tom, I've got to jump in here with some questions uh, with respect to, you know, you're uh, giving the, the methodology for this report, but because it's a traffic study, um, mm -hmm. Do you believe this traffic study that that LBJ did uh, was something that could have been done by the average lay person with or without your type of expertise, expertise or education? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. I think there's a specific methodology that you should follow on these. Okay. So how long have you been employed by uh, your firm? Uh, I've been at my firm for two and a half years and then uh, at a different firm seven years before that. Okay. And what's your official title? Uh, I'm a transportation engineer and um, NEPA specialist. Uh, that's National uh, Environmental Policy Act. Okay. Um, well, what's your educational background? Uh, I have a master's. Degree? Uh, I have a master's degree in civil engineering from the University of Akron, uh, and I'm a registered professional engineer in Ohio, and I'm also a certified professional traffic operations engineer. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, if the planning commission is so willing, uh, you know, they can say that Mr. Fl 
is, do you have a title, Mr. Flask? Uh, <laughs> could be qualified as an expert witness for his trial for engineering. Good. Uh, do any other members of the Planning Commission have any questions for uh, uh, Dan or Tom regarding the traffic flow? Not seeing anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have any other questions about the uh, traffic study at this point as well. Thank you very much for your information. You guys could uh, hang around, please, just in case. Okay. Uh, Max, did you have something you wanted to add? Okay. Yes. Um, I, I, that. To, oh, um, I wanted to take the opportunity. Um, actually, D Dave wanted to introduce a friend, another person who would like to say a word or two. Hey, guys, this is the guy I was talking about. He is the uh, he is the director of hip hop at the Kennedy Center in Washington. His name is Kamal Farid. He's also a founding member of the rap group, a tribe called Quest, and uh, in artistic circles is is renowned as one of the best music producers. Literally up. So here he is. <laughs> That's such a sweet intro. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How's everybody doing? You good? <laughs> Nod your head if you mute it. Everybody on three, one, two, three. You good? Good. <laughs> um, I just, uh, New York City boy, and um, just coming here today and walking you know, walking along, you know, you know, springs and, and seeing a lot of the developments just going on and, and learning some of the history and seeing, uh, you know, a lot of the fruits of you guys' labor, um, you know, as somebody from New York, um, which I guess is what they, they call the, the satellite city to the world in terms of some of, of how much um, commerce and activity is aggregated there. The future here seems really bright, and I'm 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 flattered and humbled that my good boy, uh, my brother Dave, um, had that the, the kind of foresight um, to kind of uh, replant his seeds of his history here, and we're also happy for him to to want to be able to fuel this community with, you know, this great degree of arts and commerce and, and discovery here. Uh, one of the, the reason why I, I guess I come into play here is because one of the, uh, as I'm sure you all know, one of the, the aspects of the builds is, is a, a recording studio. Um, um, you know, I'm sorry. They don't know about it. They don't? No, that's another one. We don't know. No? But, but it's Wrong still maybe. Right? Yeah. No, no. I hope I can say something up. But, no, no. no but, but, but that's, but, to, but honestly, just being transparent, that's um, one of the things that um, I saw that I'm personally taking, you know, interest in with helping Dave along with some of my engineers that I work with back home to, to, to develop something that would be, um, you know, a conduit for a lot of the artistic community um, to come here to visit, to stay, to create, to, 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 to live, you know, and to commune and to interact with a lot of the people here and to kind of en enrich it. So I just wanted to just, you know, in good faith, say to all of you that you will be seeing more of me or, or, feel, or feeling me here as, as we begin to, to start that journey. Um, and I just um, wanted you to know that Dave has great reach, as I'm sure you all, all know, but he's somebody that, that I've known for pretty much 30 years. I feel, it feels like 30 years, right? Um, and I'm excited about, you know, being able to come here and, you know, um, just add another yeah. uh, another um, hue to, the, to, 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 to what you're painting here. Um, so I just wanted to say that in good faith. Um, and I'm looking forward to, you know, when COVID and the worlds of COVID calms down, 
that we could do the best thing that we could all do as, as people and just see each other and, and say hey to each other. And, you know, you guys could put some eyes and hands on the, 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 the whole beautiful compound that we're, we're going to do. So I just wanted to say that and let you guys see my face and say, hey, before I scoot off and I'm famished to get something to eat. So, but I just wanted to say that to everybody. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so much, Tim. Uh, bring it back to Planning Commission. Uh, are there any additional questions or concerns that anybody has for Max and his team or for Denise before we open the public hearing? So I just I had a question yep. for yes. Max. The um, the eating outdoor eating part is that does it have a roof over it? Is it going to be out of the rain? Yeah, yeah, it, it's a trellis, but the idea is that it's a convertible trellis. So um, the, the the plan is to have it be both an open air and a closed roof. So they, they make these uh, kind of fancy trellises that can close on themselves and create a, a waterproof surface. And, you know, and then we'd put heaters underneath as well, where, you know, it may not be four seasons, uh, but, but we're going to make it, Try to make it as usable as we can for most of the year uh, by by putting uh, sort of this convertible roof idea on it. Okay. And how many actual seats are inside in the restaurant? Well, it's a good question. The uh, the exact calculations are in your packet. I don't remember the exact numbers, but the number of seats inside is pretty limited. It's in like the 20s or 30s. Maybe Denise can answer what from what our calculations are. And that's why the, the outdoor patios are so important. Um, by the time you get a kitchen in there and various uh, you know, bathrooms and back of house needs, there's not a whole lot of room for a dining room. And, and I mean, there is a dining room, uh, but it's small. And um, you know, the, the precise layout of the restaurant um, is not defined yet. Um, okay. but, but there is a maximum count just based on its square footage and what the code will allow. Um, Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns right now? This is Laura Curlis. I have a, okay. I have a concern. Sorry about my dog. Um, I have a concern about lighting in general because the, the impact of all the beautiful lights, and they are beautiful, can be pretty significant on the neighbors. And I guess, I, and I understand that... Um, that uh, downward directional and 90 degree cutoff lighting is gonna be used as much as possible. I would just um, ask a special consideration to, but from staff and Max to please really look at making it as soft as possible. And the bollard lighting, I, I made the same request when the new fire station was built and I'm, I, I, I wish that the bollard lighting were not as bright as it is. That that bollard lighting can be pretty pretty bright and outward directional. So have a look at the new fire station and see what they put there. That's not my idea of downward directional and soft lighting. So um, I just think it can have a really big impact and make it brighter than it needs to be. And finally, on that point, we know that lighting has an impact on wildlife and uh, the and birds in particular. So, um, and I I understand it's it's a nightclub, so it needs to be lit up. But just ask for consideration about that. Thank you very much. Uh, I, if I may respond, I, I think that's a very valid concern. And um, if you've been observing my work here over the last um, several weeks, you, you may have noticed um, that that uh, I, I think you know experimenting with lighting is critical to the success of a project. How it what it looks like and how it actually presents at night. So you know we can do all kinds of studies up front, and I can make these pretty renderings, but that's not reality. In order to really get it right, you just have to light it up at night. You have to put in the time and go out there and shine lights on it in different ways at different angles. Um, and you know we we're fortunate where we are in in the technology of lighting 
in this day and age, um, you know, the, the advances in LED lights, how they can be dimmed and, you know, the energy efficiency of them, et cetera, has come just leaps and bounds in, in just in the 30 years of my career. Um, so I, what I'm getting at is that is absolutely something I would give close consideration to. Uh, the bollard lights can be, you know, size, the, the size of the bulbs can be sized properly. Um, and that's what we'll work on. We're not just going to pick one out of a catalog. We're going to try probably four or five different versions and figure out what works. And, you know, um, I'll, I'll take uh, Betty and Wayne's uh, uh, comments into a serious consideration. Okay, thank you. Any other planning commission questions or concerns at this point? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open the public hearing on this conditional use. And so if there's any members of the public, uh, I see somebody waving already, so uh, who would like to speak, uh, you know, please either uh, raise your hand, make yourself noticed, or use the raise your hand button on your computer screen. And we'll try to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak. And we're, we're asking people to uh, try to limit their comments to uh, three minutes or less if you can. So who's first? Is it up here? Can some, uh, I think you're still muted. Uh, I'm not sure who's doing that. Yeah, there we go. Hello, you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great, great. Hello, my name is Issa Walker, longtime resident here, raised here. My parents both um, went to Antioch. My dad graduated from Antioch College. My mother got a master's degree at McGregor. Um, both of them very involved in the, in the community. So. Uh, that's a part of the community that I'm very much into because of my background. Um, and uh, as a younger person from this village, I see this as a great opportunity for the growth of a younger, more diverse culture, um, which is a huge aspect of our community that I see dwindling over the years. Um, also, it's an opportunity for economic growth within this community as it will create more jobs especially for younger people who come back from college in the summer who are often looking for work. Um, they won't have to leave the village to find work. Um, I also feel like this village is in much need uh, of quality entertainment and more opportunities for artists to express themselves. Uh, culture is what makes this, uh, makes us unique from surrounding areas. And uh, this will only nurture and enhance it. Um, I believe it encapsulates all of these aspects in one. I believe this will help all the businesses um, in town. And uh, so I see it as a win-win for everybody. Um, I attribute a lot of my personal success as an artist to the relationships that I have built in this village. And I believe that this will only increase these opportunities for other local artists like myself. So that's pretty much what I have to say. Thank you. Yep, thank you, Issa. I think, is it uh, Betty and Wayne? Could we get Hi. them uh, unmuted, please? We're working on getting you unmuted up there. Okay, there we go. Looks like I am. Well, yes. I'm the one, one of the ones y'all have been talking about all night. <laughs> my, name, my name is Betty Kelly. For the past 30 years, my husband Wayne Golden and I have lived across from the former fire station and wish to continue living here into the future. Today's proposed project initially created a lot of concerns as noted in my written statement. After Max voluntarily came to speak with us on Sunday, most of my concerns have been allayed. He also assured us his future willingness to address problems with the goal of finding mutual accommodations. I also want to acknowledge his thoughtful design that not only makes a good use of the existing structure, but was crafted to have the least amount of impact on us. And for that, I like to thank them publicly. Personally, I want all businesses to succeed so that we can remain a community. At times, this means accommodation. In 30 years, we've only had two serious issues and both of them were amiably resolved. It takes a lot of accommodation to live downtown behind a lot of businesses. My remaining concern is, of course, parking. And I know that Max addressed it, 
The staff sees no parking problems because they state there are three municipal lots available. Dayton Street, which is Dayton Street, which is two blocks away, Corey Street and Key Sally. What they fail to recognize is that Corey Street and Keith Alley lots are currently heavily used by everyone patronizing downtown Yellow Springs. My fear is that Dave's patrons will not use the available shuttle, will fill up the adjacent lot, leaving the other businesses, pa businesses patrons with no option. Let's face it, Americans are lazy. They want to get in their cars, drive to their event, park as close as possible, and not take a bus. Then, FYI, in the winter, Keep Sally is not plowed. What you have are icy ruts created from delivery trucks. Will Corey Street remain a, blowing, a plowing priority since the fire station has moved? The bike path is also not plowed. Sidewalk usage is iffy. The Beatty Hughes sidewalks is sometimes plowed, sometimes plowed by the village, but Cannon's property is never shoveled. And we stopped shoveling after the snowfall repeatedly filled the sidewalk back up. So if you're gonna park somewhere else, you're not gonna be able to walk down here. Let me reiterate, I do want Dave to be successful. I think this would be an interesting asset for the village, but the parking issue needs to be resolved. If his plans are approved as stated in their note and there are future problems, um, is there any kind of recourse? Thank you. Thank you very much, Betty. Anybody else? Who else? Are there other people who wanted to speak? Uh, I see Jamie Sharp. I'm just looking at my screen and picking people out here as best I can. So let's keep uh, Jamie unmuted. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm here tonight uh, representing the Downtown Business Association of Yellow Springs and its 73 members, all downtown business owners. And just really quickly, because we're a new group, so you understand who we are. Uh, this is a group that formed during the 2020 COVID shutdown. And we came together to build a community to help save our businesses and help save our downtown. And in the process, we realized that we needed to become a cohesive voice that advocates for the concerns of the downtown business district. And we have defined that as the zone central business district and millworks. So we have 73 business owners from that area that are all talking and communicating and building a, a community like we haven't had before. Um, we realize the need to better represent ourselves and our specific concerns to the chamber, village government, and the wider community. And now that we're organized, we're ready to participate in solutions that support our businesses, like getting involved with local leadership, developing collaborations with the area organizations, examining issues related to tourism and infrastructure, finding a group voice and identity to strengthen our relationships with the local community and marketing and targeting visitors in a way to help control crowds and tourism. So we posted a survey to the group Facebook page for the Downtown Business Association to gauge how business owners are feeling about the comedy club project. And I'm happy to report um, that there was a resounding unanimous uh, support of the club. Everybody's very excited about it. And I just wanted to share a couple of comments about from the discussion that came up. Uh, here's one. I support any local business in town that brings nice people to us. And I think Dave's trying to help rebuild the village. We all need to support each other. Here's another one. Really looking forward to the opening of the comedy club. It will add a level of inclusion to this town that has been sorely missing. I want this town to look and feel like it did when I was growing up here and people from all different backgrounds lived and worked here to create a loving, strong, diverse community. Uh, this is genuinely a remarkable opportunity to really build something unique and special. We have front row seats to see Dave bring world-class entertainment. This privilege is generally reserved for large metropolitan areas like New York and, a and LA, but we will get this right here in rural Ohio. Another one for those of us who grew up here, we come back uh, to own businesses and contribute because of an era that was foundational in our upbringing. 
We all want to move wildly forward and at the same time return yet why us to what we know it really is. This is our moment to achieve that. Here's another, our customer base will grow as will the disposable income they bring into our businesses. We're in charge of giving people a good reason to come back to Yellow Springs before, during, and after experiencing one of Dave's shows. We take care of that and there will be a never ending stream of income for all parties involved. And the final one is, I think it's an, an important component to future growth in the village. I think we're on a great track Let's keep pushing for what we need. So as a group, we're all very excited about the opportunities and possibilities this project is bringing to us, and we're really happy to welcome Dave into our business community. Um, any concerns that were expressed weren't specific to this project and mostly echo a lot of what's been said. We want to make sure, as on a global level, that we're taking a strategic high level view of managing growth and assuring we have the infrastructure to support it. Um, and so parking was a common cry. And I wanted to let you know that- We did the, the three minute time limit. So oh. uh, I'm gonna ask you to try, try to wrap it up. Okay, well, the downtown merchants are submitting <laughs> a letter this week with specific, specific parking requests and suggestions to village council. And just on a personal level, I'm really impressed with all the thought and concern that's going into this project and its larger impact on our community and what it means for all of us. So we're all super excited, um, recognize this is a really unique opportunity for us and are excited to see this move forward. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, well, so uh, see, is it Jill? Can we get the, the can we, yeah, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, I just wanted to um, make it known that I am a recent um, homeowner here. We just moved to the village. Um, I have children in the schools, and the reason we picked this community was because of its like-mindedness. So I just wanted to say that our family is super excited about the uh, possibility of the of Dave's comedy club um, because what he said on the meet just when he was speaking was that it could be a global beacon because the reason that we chose to move to Yellow Springs from Cincinnati was because of the community, because of what we've heard about the community and the like-mindedness and the inclusivity. Um, and so just that that could actually be seen all around the country, a spotlight on Yellow Springs as, hey, this is a progressive place to live and you're safe here. And I think that's a wonderful message. So I just really appreciate all the effort and all the um, activities surrounding the new, the new club. Um, and I think also the advent possibly for new artists to spring up through the club. You know, you're coming to a club that is very, uh, you know, accepting and loving and supportive. So um, I just wanted to say as a new member of the community, we are 100 percent, 200 percent supportive. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jill. Anybody else I see, is it uh, Mark? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. I wanted to take, I, first I wanted to say that... Uh, uh, Max, I really appreciated that sign and, and your sentiment about it being Dave, Dave Chappelle and friends. And the reason that I say that is over during this period of COVID, not only did Dave bring us a whole lot of business, he brought a lot of his friends to town. And as a result of that, um, I mean, I've got uh, Michelle Wolf living literally next door to me um, when when Donnell Rawlings was was. Uh, was uh, convalescing during the, during his bout of COVID in Austin. Um, he would call and we would chat all the time. These are people who are becoming a part of the fabric of our community. Um, and I appreciate it. And it cer certainly is a much more diverse fabric than we've seen in a while. Um, so I just want to say I not only appreciate the business opportunity that is coming for coming for us, uh, for my daughter and I in Yellow Springer Tees, but also I appreciate the fact that um, it's really adding to, to the culture and, the, and the, the feeling of community that we have here. Thank you, Mark. I'm looking around at my screen, see if anybody else is waving up. I see uh, Luke. Thanks, Frank. 
Uh, I'm hi everybody. I'm Luke Dennis. I'm the station manager at Wiso, and I've lived here for 15 years in the village. And I actually prepared a statement because three minutes goes quickly. Um, it does. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll keep it moving. Uh, I, I think Dave is investing in the cultural vitality of our village. Culture has always been the currency of Yell Springs. Growing up in rural Clinton County, I recognize that, and I've always felt connected to this place, not to the small-minded culture of Wilmington where I was born, but to the creative and welcoming culture that I saw here. But what I didn't know as a kid when I was visiting here in the 80s and 90s was that Yellow Springs was really uh, running on the fumes of the counterculture that was so dominant here in the 60s, thanks to Antioch College. Uh, and that Yellow Springs in some ways had become a, a parody of itself. And today it's it's still running on those fumes. And today still the only people wearing tie-dyed shirts are, are the tourists, right? So we have an opportunity to inject a fresh new vitality into our town. There is a passing of the baton that's happening right now. Uh, a handful of wealthy, elderly white men are no longer the dominant property owners in this town. Dave and his real estate investments are one piece of this new vitality. Uh, for another example, just read the front page of the Yellow Springs News last week. Look at the dynamic young people who are running for council. They want to serve this community that they love. And it's obvious to me that Dave loves this community, too, and that he wants to serve it. I've heard him speak wistfully about the Yellow Springs that he knew as a kid. Uh, it was a place of cultural vitality, a place where interesting conversations were happening on every street corner. And of course, they were coming out of every building on, on the Antioch campus. But we can't hold our breath and wait any longer for Antioch to rise from the ashes, right? I mean, I hope that it will. I really hope that it will. But regardless, we, the residents, the people who live here now, we can band together now and create the future village that we want. And the currency of our stronger, more diverse town will be culture, right? And that's what Dave's Firehouse Project represents. His comedy club will be a place where comedians and other artists will dissect our society and point to solutions through laughter. I understand that the firehouse is located in the central business district, which is zoned B1, uh, which I guess I understand is where cultural uses are permitted and encouraged. What an excellent cultural use Dave is proposing. I think we have a remarkable opportunity before us today, and I urge you to approve it. And I realize now I'm just adding my voice to the chorus, but uh, really happy to express my support, and I appreciate the time. Thanks, Frank. Okay, thank you, Luke. Uh, let's see, Lisa. Ah, thank you. Um, so Nate Cornett, Lisa Walters with Yellow Springs Brewery. And uh, a lot of you folks know here that we had some interest in the building at one point in time, but I would like to uh, publicly say that I honestly can't think of a better use for this space at this point in time. And, and we'll be super proud to support this. And um, we too uh, appreciate the business opportunity that comes along with this. We, that is not unnoticed by us. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Jim Johnson. I have to get you unmuted here. Oh, you're still muted. There we go. Okay. There we are. I would just like to offer my support for the comedy club and thank Dave for investing. I would like to remind people that there used to be an opera house right downtown on Dayton Street. It was torn down in the early 60s. It was a loss. Um, my, my father used to come to the opera house to see performances, and he lived in Limesburg. Uh, he used to park in front of the house I now live. Um, it, 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 if anybody remembers, it, it's on the corner of Winter and Dayton Street. Um, it got torn down. That's a loss, and I think this is this is a replacement for a venue that we that we have lost. And uh, uh, I support the the effort, and uh, I want to thank Dave and his team for for doing what they're doing. Thank, thank you, Jim. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, is it Lindsay? Get you. There we are. Can you hear me? 
Yes. Hello, I'm Lindsay uh, Burke. I'm running for village council. I'm one of those uh, young folks that you spoke of, um, a single parent in the village and a business owner. Um, so I'm wearing a lot of hats tonight and I just wanted to um, say that most of my material has already been spoken, but I wanted to express my tremendous thanks to Dave and to Max for contributing their incredible talent um, and for being generous with this town and for giving us opportunities that we could not even conceive of other. Um, I think that the comedy club is going to bring good jobs, jobs that will lead the people that work them, even, even just in the eatery or even the most basic jobs in the club are going to lead people to better careers in the future. I think this plan celebrates what makes us great as a village. It continues our investment in the arts and culture and innovation. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I couldn't be more supportive. Um, so again, thank you uh, to Dave and to Max for your generosity. Um, and I urge the Planning Commission to approve this plan. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, we have, is it, is it Wayne, did you have your hand up again? Good. Hi. Get you unmuted here. Oh, there we are. There we go. Uh, um, yeah, my name's Wayne Gould, and I'm the other half of Betty Kelly. Uh, my wife and I own and live in the house directly across the street, as you've heard many times uh, from the proposed restaurant and club. Our overriding goal is to be able to continue living in our house where we've been for 30 years. Close behind that goal, though, is to live in a thriving, interesting community of which uh, businesses like this are a significant part. I understand that the commission has to follow a set of standards and the report generally indicates that these standards have been met. I also understand that we live in a B1 business district and have to accept some amount of nuisance. Coming back to this project, our concerns are the typical ones. Lights, noise, general nuisance, congestion. Congestion revolves around traffic and parking. Let me go through each of these just to give you some sense of where we stand. Uh, after talking with uh, Mr. Chrome, I'm hopeful that the lights from the venue itself will not be a problem. Uh, might be wrong, but I don't think they are. Uh, lights from cars looking for parking could well be, though. We do have that problem. After uh, and noise, noise is still a concern. Uh, the report states that it mostly will be outdoor patrons of the restaurant, which in itself to us is a minor concern. Perhaps more importantly to us is the uh, traffic noise, especially late at night. Everybody leaving the club at 2 a.m., example. General nuisance is still a concern. Uh, some of this might come from the happy and tipsy patrons returning to their cars. Some of this might come from the hangers-on, of which there's a fair number in this town. Traffic is still a concern, both from the restaurant and the club. A traffic study was done to check off that requirement, but that study is useless from any practical standpoint. To me, a large part of the traffic problems will be a consequence of the parking problems. As people pull up to the front of the thing, they can't find a parking spot, they go looking. And that, that's gonna cause uh, to me huge problems. I don't know any way to model that, by the way. Uh, parking, of course, is our largest concern and it will inevitably contribute to every other one of our concerns. First, the restaurant. The report says it requires uh, 64 spaces. I think it's probably a bit high. Uh, they'll inevitably try to park at the uh, Corey Street parking lot, which is already heavily used. Uh, the, the pictures you showed, Max, are nice, but uh, during, a, during a shutdown of the Little Art and uh, you know, the Winds Cafe, uh, they're not really very indicative of what really happens here when things get going again. Uh, second, the club, uh, the report says they'll need 30 spaces uh, by my lights, uh, there's 100 patrons or so. They'll drive 50 cars. They'll be coming and going it's at different shows three times a night, maybe. Uh, so there's going to you're going to 100 spaces, not 30, um, and potentially more than 100 if they in fact hang around town like we'd like to think they would. Uh, I have two two quick ideas. Uh, first off, in sending the patrons to use the shuttle somehow, we've already talked about that. And the second one is, is that maybe do a package deal with the hotel and, you know, work a deal so they park there as opposed to parking, you know, trying to park downtown. Uh, if a majority of the patrons first try to park at the venue, uh, it's going to turn into a boondoggle. It just will. And you are at three minutes. Thank you. Okay. And that's it. This has been the briefest recaps. 
uh, I've submitted longer write-ups, yeah. those, and I'll be available for other stuff if you need to talk to me. Thank you much. Yeah, and your letters are part of the part of the official record yeah. as well. So okay. that's good. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it uh, Valerie? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I did not prepare anything. I just wanted to throw out uh, comments and questions while I was listening tonight. First of all, I will completely reinforce all of the positive comments I've heard tonight. I think this is a terrific idea. And I want to add for one important reason. I spent a lot of time at comedy clubs in Los Angeles and San Diego. I even hosted an event at a comedy club as a fundraiser, a stand-up show, because this is a cultural opportunity for storytelling. And that is something that I see extremely important and relevant in Yellow Springs, where we embrace the history and this venue, this platform, whether it's stand-up, whether it's musician, whether anything, whoever's on stage, we need the storytelling because our storytelling culture has completely collapsed. It used to be around a campfire, and now it's just television, movie. For sure, I embrace the little art theater. So throwing that idea out there, we will have a greater dynamic depth and breadth into our souls because of this event space. My questions are, and sorry, first of all, before the question, I want to reinforce what Laura Curlis said. I'm very concerned about the lights and how they will affect the birds and the moths in particular that are in Glen Helen, anywhere else. I am sure, as Matt said earlier, this can also be handled easily. I just want to express that as a person interested in sustainability, we need to take care of that. And the next point is simply, Max, is it possible that we could do a LEED certified building? It's a renovation, a retrofit, but could we do this? It would make it even cooler for the world, for the glory of Yellow Springs, what Yellow Springs represents. We are a National Wildlife Federation certified habit, wildlife habitat community. We want to keep doing this. Let's make this building LEED certified at the level that it possibly can be. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Valerie. Uh, is it Dino? You have your hand up. Hi guys, I uh, just wanna say a couple things from a business standpoint. Um, you know, Dino's Cappuccino's is right around the corner from from the fire department. So 7 to 10 o'clock, our business has always dropped off. This opportunity is going to afford us, from a business standpoint, and all the businesses that remain open late, is going to give us uh, an economic boon in that respect alone. Lastly, I want to say what has come from this, from what Dave doing everything that he's done, is that we've built a community of friends and family. I've gotten to meet people. Uh, you've gotten to grow with them. You've gotten to understand them, and they've become part of my family, and I've become part of them. That's important, and that's a great facet that has been brought to us and it's brought, will be brought to our community. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. And just a reminder, for uh, if people could uh, mute themselves again so we don't get uh, – uh, feedback on the microphones. Anybody else wants to speak on this? I think uh, Lindsay. She's already spoken. Oh. Sorry, this is one thing I wanted to add that I, I did. Yeah, very, just, very briefly again. <laughs> very briefly. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Max um, because on this and other projects that he's been a part of, um, I appreciate the transparency and the desire to work with the neighbors and to be as accommodating of natural resources and um, and to respect the history of the village. So I wanted to make sure that is a narrative as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and just in general, when people are commenting, you must address your comments to the Planning Commission only. Thank you. Is there anybody else who has not had an opportunity to speak who would like to speak on this? I don't know, Judy, are you seeing any other hands going up? I'm not seeing any other hands raised. Not, I think you're good. Okay. 
Uh, we got Alex Melamed. We got to make this fast. Okay, Alex. Sorry, that was just a reaction button for a thumbs oh, up. Okay, Thanks, guys. Keep okay, going. sorry. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, so I think we've uh, pretty much covered everybody. Hopefully, we're not uh, excluding anybody. So I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to Planning Commission. Uh, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, well, I was just going to ask first if there's any uh, questions or concerns anybody at Planning Commission has that they need addressed, or are we ready for a motion at this point? Okay, I've, got Laura, fast question. I've got a fast question for Denise. I, okay. It was clear to me whether or not you needed any kind of additional permission for that marquee sign. Does that need to be in the motion or was that a non-issue? Uh, well, they have to come for a, a variance for the um, uh, outdoor patio having a zero lot line and um, multiple, uh, some additional types of signs. So we would also address that. Um, as a variance because of it being on a marquee. And Bri unless Brianne has an objection to that. I, I do not. The, I mean, this is one of those things that our code says, you know, something's a roof sign and, you know, it, and, you know, the argument's been made that it's not because it's not on the roof, which is, you know, something that the BZA can take up because it is addressing all the other variances for signage and this pertains to signage. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the planning commission's condition that you know, the BZA, I mean, you're, get, you're going to be having a recommended condition that they go to the BZA for variance for signage pertaining to all these other sections of the code. Yeah, that was that's where it'll, so that's where it'll be decided, not at the planning commission level. So yeah, the, that was in, so, in the con, in the conditions that were listed at the end of the so, staff report. Right. Yeah. yeah. So in the motion, the the conditions is the variance for the <clears throat> for the signage and the outdoor patio uh, zero lot line. Okay, Laura, would you like to make a motion? I would. I'd like to make a motion that we approve this use and the site plan upon the following conditions: that they seek a variance for the from the BZA for the east side outdoor patio lot line setback variance and for the sign variance that they need and that the lighting plan and final signage plan be approved by the zoning administrator taking into consideration the comments made here tonight i will second that motion okay. is there any discussion of the motion as it's been made before we move on to a vote Okay, uh, in that case, uh, I'll ask the clerk to call the call the roll, please. Yes. Curlis. Yes. Styles. Yes. Green. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Doden. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for participating, all the helpful information we got, uh, and all the members of the public who uh, uh, showed up to the damn long Zoom meeting to participate in this. That's very important. I, I just want to make a comment it's from staff. Part of what I love about li living in the village, yes. Uh, I, yeah, I just want to make a comment from staff, too, that we thank you very much for, um, for your deliberations. Uh, this has been something that Johnny Burns, um, Josue, and I have been working uh, with Max on and Dave for, it's been well over a year, probably close to two years. So I'm so glad that, that this is finally happening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you so okay. much. All right, we'll move on now to the second condition of use uh, application. Uh, Alex Melamed of Access Architecture on behalf of uh, Carla Bakke. Ba is it Bachi or Bakke? I'm not sure. I'm probably mispronouncing your name. Please correct me. Uh, submitted a Bachi, thank you. Uh, conditional use application for an accessory dwelling unit at 118 Mar Marshall Street. So, uh, Denise, would you like to uh, summarize the staff report, please? Sure. Um, you know, uh, accessory dwelling units. Um, are a conditional use and um, infill development being a village goal. Um, this use is in compliance with the zoning code. Um, the utilities are gonna be shared with the primary dwelling. It's a one and a half story Cape Cod style home. 
The accessory dwelling unit will be located on the second floor of a 756 square foot uh, garage. It will be a height of 24 feet, which meets our code. The setbacks and lot coverage requirements in the, in the zoning code are also met. Um, the parking requirement for an ADU is two for the primary and one for the ADU, and the property can easily accommodate three up to seven parking spaces. And staff approves this use and is not requiring any conditions of approval. Okay. Um, do any members of the Planning Commission have any questions or concerns specifically to Denise or perhaps to Alex regarding this uh, application? Alex, do you have a elevation of this garage? The I just see the um, the layouts, but I was kind of curious what it actually looked like. I was it was hard to figure out sure. why it had such a funny shape. Yeah, um, if I could share my screen, I could show it to you. Let's see. Is that working? Um. I am disabled. Right now, Alex. Oh, thank you. Ah, uh, very nice. There we go. Okay. Uh, that should do it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Can you see yeah. this? The uh, yes. building. Yeah. Cool. Okay. There we have. Um, this is the house. Yeah. These are construction elevations. Uh, with the. Uh, can you see my cursor? Yeah. Yes. Cool. That is, these are sort of the additions to the house. So they're very fitting. Um, the current front elevation seen from the street is here. Um, and the addition, so this is on the side and moving towards the back, um, close to the back of the lot uh, within setbacks is the carriage house. Um, and then there's a, the, des the design uh, contains a a nice walkway with a little kind of screen porch that would architecturally connect these. Um, but we don't know if that's going to be built at the same time. So that's why it's um, listed as an accessory dwelling and not uh, an addition. Okay. Now that makes sense. The, the, the way the roof has two different pitches makes sense of why it looks like it does. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a little confusing in plan. Elevation yep. makes it clear. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, Alex, are you going to stop sharing your screen? Stop so, sharing. There's the button. <laughs> Little red button. All right. Okay. Any other questions uh, members of the Planning Commission have for Denise or Alex at this point? Okay, if not, I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing to see if there are any members of the public out there who would like to comment on this conditional use application. Uh, if so, please wave or electronically raise your hand, and we'll give everybody a few seconds to chime in. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. I do not have anyone, Frank. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the Planning Commission for any final considerations or thoughts anybody has. Uh, I will say Questions? there's a similar mm -hmm. uh, carriage house right next door. Um, mm -hmm. So it's fitting for the neighborhood. No questions? Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, move that uh, we approve the application for the conditional use application at oh, 118 Marshall Street for the accessory dwelling unit. I second it. Okay. Any discussion of the motion or any ongoing concerns before I have the clerk call the roll? Okay. Would you call the roll, please? Yes, Green. Yes. Styles. Yes. Emmend. Yes. Perlis. Yes. Doden. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks you. Everyone. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for your patience for sticking with us all night. <laughs> Interesting. All right.
Okay, we'll move on to the third conditional use application. Jim Johnson has submitted a conditional use application for a bed and breakfast establishment at 310 Dayton Street. And uh, again, Denise, could you start us off with a summary of the staff report? Sure. Um, <clears throat> Um, the B&B requirements um, are met as it is a detached single family dwelling um, in the floor plan, which you have in your packet. It shows two guest bedrooms upstairs with um, what he uh, on the da downstairs floor um, he shows what is called a music room, which is a, a guest visiting area. Um, the owner does will live on site on the first floor at the back of the house. Um, he will be providing a uh, breakfast along with an evening snack, snack, which is also a requirement of the B&B. Um, and of course, him, he will have to live on site. Um, he does intend to add two parking spaces at the front of this property, as well as he has space um, for the required two parking spaces for his primary dwelling that's on the existing driveway. Um, they, he, the letters that have come in uh, it have been in support. Um, I believe there was a letter from the ex neighbor ex directly to the um, east, uh, and as well as I think there was a last minute one that came in today, yeah. Judy, um, as well. And, and both are in support. And then uh, further down, Ellen Hoover also uh, uh, gave a letter of support. And um, staff approves this use and is really not requiring any conditions of approval. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do any members of the Planning Commission have any questions for Denise or perhaps I guess uh, Jim is here as well for Jim? I, I have two questions. Um, sure. When you say there are two parking spaces in the, in the front, I, I, I was kind of trying to imagine where in the front. As you pull into the driveway, there'll be a parking pad to the right where there's currently a lawn area. Ah, okay. So, the, it's so what's there'll, be, listed there'll as... be no lawn. Well, he has, he has lawn. It just, he won't have a portion of the lawn in the front. It's uh, in Denise on, it's on the diagram. It's on page one, but is that the proposed parking? Yes. Okay. Do you see that, Laura? It's not existing right now. I'm not but, sure if I, I mean, I looked at the packet a couple of times. And what page you say it's the diagrams on? It's the, or page it's a less, three. it's exhibit B. Okay. Okay. When you see the proposed parking, he's got exhibit B. There. Yeah. So he'll have his driveway where. Which oh, goes I see. Back to yeah, the yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. 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 Okay. I see it. Okay. And then a sign for four foot square. Um, I, it's. I feel like it's kind of large because a lot of politicians like me have four foot square signs and they're pretty big. Um, is that is that that's what is allowed under the code? If oh, I don't have the code in front of me, but if that's what it says, it is. It, it, it's a it would be two by two. Oh, a two two by not a okay. So you know, yeah, because it would be a four foot square. Yeah. Okay. Four, thank you. Four square okay. feet. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Anybody? Any other planning commission members have any questions? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open the public hearing to see if anybody has any members of the public. And again, give people time to either electronically raise your hand or, or wave at the camera. And not seeing any activity, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to planning commission. So. I, did, I guess one other question, uh -huh. uh, and I didn't go and, and walk on the property or anything, but so the proposed parking in front, taking out the lawn, is that the only logical place for it, the additional yes. parking? Yes, um, because otherwise it would require a second curb cut, which on Dayton Street probably is not a great idea. Okay. And there, 
Is there parking on the street there? Not on that side. Okay. I, th I think if uh, where he's located, I I don't think so. You, you can park along in, in front of 314 Dayton Street, um, but I'm not so sure. It's pretty narrow there. We could ask yeah, him. That part, it wouldn't yeah. be very safe parking. Right. Okay. Any other questions or concerns from members of the Planning Commission? Okay. Uh, that's the case. I'll go ahead and move that we approve the application for the bed and breakfast establishment at 310 Dayton Street. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any discussion of the amendment? If not, uh, would the clerk call the roll, please? Yes. Styles. <clears throat> yes. Green. Yes. <coughs> Amend. Yes. Curlis. Yes. Doden. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for sticking with us all night. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that gets us to the the thin part of the agenda at the bottom of the sheet. Old business, new business, and agenda planning. Do we have anything in any of those three categories? I, I'd like to, you know, we keep on talking about parking, and uh -huh. I know that the this issue is, like, at some point we're going to do a parking study. I'm just... Um, you know, I, I'm just kind of like, I, I don't know where, the, where this belongs, but um, I, I feel um, I feel like maybe the, I'm wondering whether there isn't some kind of technical solutions or some way of helping people see where the parking spots are. Because the example about the Little Art Theater is really insightful. That to, it, it, Sometimes the Little Art is full and all those people find places to park. And, you know, I, people coming into the village, I don't think the challenge is that there aren't parking spots. It's finding parking spots. And right. So I don't know what we can do to help that. And really, you know, it, it, uh, um, you know, uh, we had this discussion here with my family and, and they were saying that, well, you know, you can, if you can see the front of the building, that that's where you want to park. So, so the suggestion came up that maybe we need to put a big tower right in downtown so that you could park <laughs> someplace further away and see where you were trying to get to. In any case, I'm just wondering what, you know, whether there isn't an opportunity for, for us to do something different. You know, um, uh, when we did the comprehensive land use plan, which, which happened between 2019 through 2020, um, because of COVID, it kind of things got slowed down a little bit. Um, we have staff did do some parking plans for, for um, ways to increase on street parking. Um, at the time, council didn't choose to add those into the comprehensive land use plan, but I, they are open to considering that again. Um, and staff has mentioned the fact that we really need to do a deep dive parking study. And really it's the thing about it is, is we, we, we pretty much know what needs to be done, but um, it, would, it would help to have you know, a professional uh, study done to um, just solidify what we probably already know. And, and to be able to just make some modifications on street and having wayfinding signs, one of the one of the uh, thoughts was that you know if you just walk uh, south a little bit um, on the east side of Xenia Avenue, you'll come upon East South College Street. It has a very wide um, street, like seventy feet, and and there isn't anything there, and you could have angled parking along that. And if people knew that they could park there either through a web-based um, parking map that we might be able to provide um, yeah. some signage um, that might help people would say oh it's only five minutes away and i can easily park there instead of trying to fight for a place downtown right that's so, north college yeah so we really want to um and and, and staff is uh, going to be bringing that to uh, council um, but we, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have um, the planning commission uh, make that their recommendation. Yes, that we do want to see this done because we are gearing up right now for our doing our budgets for 2022. Okay. Do you think that downtown business association would be able to give input into that parking plan? It sounds like they're organized and they have some ideas and I think their feedback would be valuable. That's a great point, Sarah. And yes, yeah. I think that they would be, not only would they just be able to add 
input into it, but they definitely would be in support, which would help. Oh. Does it make any sense to hire LBJ because they've already done it for <laughs> just, uh, we yeah. just Yeah, I mean, Dan Hoying, I was, I was sorry to see that he wasn't on there because we actually asked him, uh, you know, what is a typical parking study? And, you know, it can be anywhere from 30 to 50,000, depending on how deep a dive you want to go. Um, but he said he would try to come up with some, you know, ideas for a quote that we could bring before council when we were working on our budgets. But we've worked with LJB a lot, you know, over the many, many, many years. What I really want to know is on a very busy, sunny Saturday, how many spaces are empty within a one to two block walk of downtown? I suspect it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of private property owners who during street fair open up and make money parking. And you would think that if there was that much demand, they would they would jump on this more on the regular weekend, for example. Right. And, you know, and Johnny Burns, he's on here right now, um, I think. This is hey, I might just caution you against having a, a discussion at this point because it's not on the yeah. agenda. And, and yeah. public okay. is not I'm either. just suggesting okay. that what we need is a peak usage study and what's empty. Because we know that when it's not peak, yeah. we got plenty of spots, right? So. Well, yeah, I know what I was just saying with Johnny. I, I won't make him talk, but just that, you know, we have other locations and at, at Cemetery Street in in US 68, right. gonna, he's going to create a parking area there. And I think the idea it, of doing the lights and making it the bike path more walkable might enhance people parking at some of these other lots rather than everyone trying to get go downtown too. So that should be considered. We can add that under new business if you want. Yeah, I'm do that. Okay, and that I point out before people forget what they saw tonight, but that parking study shows that, and I don't know if it's real or not, but that um, an additional 36 spaces might be added on some of uh, property, Mr. Chappelle owns. Johnny, did you? Yeah, I, I would just like to make a comment. I know that we have studied a lot of things in Yellow Springs. And I would, I would advocate to take some of staff's uh, recommendations and instead of putting money towards parking studies that we all know that we need more parking and put it towards the infrastructure making it actually happen. Good point. So, um, okay. it, you know, we, we can add it just for a discussion for the next meeting, just a very general discussion. Um, and then... Yeah. Uh, if we want to move on really quickly to agenda planning, uh, yes, yes. Uh, outdoor, uh, the gulch. Okay, so the gulch, the winds, peaches, um, all of those um, groups uh, followed the with the COVID uh, protocol to allow for more of an expanded outdoor patio space, um, which is it doesn't expire until the end of 2022. Um, however, you know, the WINS is getting ready to invest some money into creating a permanent larger outdoor patio, same with the Gulch. Um, and so um, they, they're going to come. Hopefully, the WINS will come as well. The Gulch has already submitted their application for October. Um, and then the Emporium, uh, Frank, you'll probably <laughs> have to recuse from this one. Um, I don't no, no I, I, I haven't been part of that for years. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so um, I didn't know if you were a silent partner or whatever, but yep, yep. Um, so uh, they are coming, they want to serve beer and wine, and they are looking into that licensing, and um, so they'll, they'll need to come for a conditional use hearing. So we definitely have two, possibly three or four uh, relating to that in the downtown area. Okay. All right. Anything else for agenda planning? Anybody has? Otherwise, I think we can move on to adjournment. Nope. Okay. Oh, uh, right. I will second that. Uh, all those in favor of adjourning, I think we can just wave. Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right. Thanks. Thank everyone. you very much, everybody, everybody. for thank a long you. meeting, but, uh, but a good meeting. So thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.